Willie, Willie, mercy, baby. This is Shaska Willie. You're listening to Broken K Fame with Frankie Seabreeze and Ariel Baloney and Cheese Sandwich. They're like Coca Cola. They're all over, baby, on whatever network that you find it on, baby. This is Navy Seal Body Guy, and you are listening to Broken K Fame with Frankie Seacrest. Ariel Agbalog and the Brothership. Now that halfwit, Shaska Willie, better not step on this or I will step on him, Jack. This is Redneck Steve. You're listening to Broken K Fame with Ariel Agbalog, Frankie Seacrest. Flap their gums about anything that they won't. Putting some steak on it. Oh, hell yeah. Welcome to Broken K Fame, the unofficial after show of Breaking K Fame with Baldrin and Barry. So glad to be talking to my BFF, <laughs> Errol Agbalar. What's going on, bud? Uh, nothing much. Uh, it's raining again here in California. We're getting a like a little small storm coming in, or that came in actually. It's raining right now, um, and it's a bit windy. But hopefully, the rest of the week will look. We'll look okay. How about you? Uh, right here, it's uh, you know typical Florida, Florida weather. You know, probably high seventies, uh, partly cloudy. Uh, we have uh, no rain scheduled for today, uh, but you know that's always subject to change, just like the cards back in the day. Card subject. That to that is true. How's the red algae going anyway? <laughs> is it still there? The uh, the red tide. You, you know it. Oh yeah, we, the red tide. Sorry. Yeah, about that. no, no, no. You're fine. We, we didn't see any dead fish on, on the beach yesterday, which is good. But mm-hmm. I started sneezing, and Jana started coughing uh, on our on our um, trip to the beach to look at the uh, sunset, which has been beautiful the last couple nights. Oh, that's awesome. Do you guys have allergies? Uh, well, no. It's probably. I mean, we do, but it's probably the red tide. So I'm, I'm I'm looking at the map right now, and it's gotten a lot better than what it was like two weeks ago. Um, if you look at the map, you see these colored dots, and of course it goes red is the worst, then orange, then yellow, and white, and gray. Gray means it's not present. White means mm-hmm. it's very low. So right around where we are, we are seeing a lot of uh, very low and not present, which is good. Uh, a little farther south to us, which is uh, down towards St. Pete Beach and Gulfport, we are seeing some yellow, which is low, which is not bad. Uh, and then a little farther south, I am seeing some medium. That would be okay. on the on the other side of the um, Sk- Sunshine Skyway Bridge. You ever mm-hmm. heard of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge? Only from you, to be okay. honest. Oh, we talked about yeah. it? No, well, you mentioned it um, during one of the earlier podcasts. Uh, oh, damn, dude, we you, got a good, you got a good memory. Well, you were you were talking about a part, some of the geographical parts of your your area, and then that's what you mentioned a couple times. Yeah, well, this this bridge is a newer bridge. Uh, I mean, newer by you know last twenty years or so, mm-hmm. uh, maybe may, maybe thirty. But uh, in the early eighties, it uh, fell. And I think 23 people died. Oh, that was during the hurricane that was like a year or two years ago, right? Or no? No, no, no. no. That, oh, that was a different. That was a different thing where people were stranded, right? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That was, okay, that, was even, I was about that, that was down like at uh, Sanibel, Camp, uh, Captiva Islands, where you know Fort Myers and Port Charlotte and whatever. Okay. But this bridge it goes from uh, Sarasota over to it crosses the Tampa Bay basically, and it's huge. Mm-hmm. Well, it used to uh, go sort of the same route, but a big ship was coming in in the storm and bumped into the bridge and it made it fall. And yeah, 23 people died. This is like 81, I think. Oh, okay. Wow. 
Yeah, and and uh, you know, about every year the newspaper here puts out a, a, an article that that talks about that tragedy, and uh, the, the the stories of some of those people are pretty pretty amazing. You know, like like one person that passed on it, they uh, had forgot to put their garbage um, by the road, and they only passed because they were coming back and. And from from going, if they had just kept going when they got on, you know, that road, they wouldn't have passed. They would have been OK, but because they stopped and they passed and one person that fell off of it survived because his truck ran off the edge and landed on another boat. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. It is. But it's but it's really a really pretty bridge. And uh, a lot of people no, don't say a lot of people, but people do go there and jump off and commit suicide. Of course. So, so um, they, yeah. so they, so they started putting up. Uh, uh, they put some phones up there, and you know, suicide prevention stuff. And then now uh, at the top, they have uh, like a chain link fence. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Um, I think the Golden Gate Bridge is the most uh, uh, bridge that has like the most suicides. I think I don't. I think I heard that before, but that was kind of interesting to me. I mean. Because it's right, it's local, but yeah, it's it's like kind of weird. I don't know. It's one of those things. But yeah, I just want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a competition. But... <laughs> it was not a competition. It was just like comparing notes, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> that well, reminds I'll... me, though. I'm go sorry. Ahead. No, go ahead. No, that reminds me, though. Back in 1989, with the uh, with the earthquake here in the Bay Area, and then. Uh, the top part, because uh, the the Bay Bridge, um, that goes from San uh, San Francisco to Oakland or vice versa, um, there's it's two decks, it's upper deck and a lower deck, right? And the the uh when the earthquake happened, parts of the upper deck fell onto the lower deck, squishing whatever cars that were underneath, and that was really disturbing to see as a child on the news, and uh, it was yeah, it was a uh, like that. that when when you told me about you know um, what happened to the bridge back then uh, and the casualties and everything that kind of reminded me of the Bay Bridge uh, when the earthquake happened and because that's the only time I've ever seen something uh, like that happen to a bridge so that stuck in my mind um, as well as like a lot of. Uh, freeways or overpasses crumbling and falling apart onto the cars underneath um yeah that was uh i don't know why i brought that up but it was that's just something that's that came to mind right now when you mentioned the bridge hey nothing wrong with a little therapy doing during the uh, podcast <laughs> recording you know yeah absolutely right you're you are absolutely right hey we get we got to get this stuff out you know yeah we do <laughs> And on that note, speaking of therapy, <laughs> yeah. uh, boy, do I have a treat for everyone today. Uh, here is my father-in-law um, reading the lyrics to one of the most popular wrestler theme songs of all time. All right, everyone, I've got a real treat for you. I've got my mother-in-law and father-in-law here. They've been here for, you know, a, a week or so. And uh, I'm going to have my father-in-law, who is from uh, central Massachusetts, so he's got a pretty thick accent, uh, especially compared to mine. I'm going to have him read you the lyrics to Sexy Boy, the Shawn Michaels theme song. Here you go, Papa. I think I'm cute. I think I'm sexy. I got the looks. That drive the girls wild. I've got the moves that really move them. I send chills up, up and down their spines. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I make them hot. I make them shiver. Their knees get weak. Whenever I'm around, they see me walk, they hear me talk. I make them feel like they're on a cloud nine. 
I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your sexy boy, your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. Eat your heart out, girls. Hands off the merchandise. Now, Papa, <laughs> now, Papa, do you know who Shawn Michaels is? Yeah. Who is he? Uh, he's bullshitting. <laughs> he looks at me and gives me the eyes. No, no, you've never even heard of Shawn Michaels. You don't even watch I've heard this song. Oh, yeah? You heard it? Yeah. Uh, have yeah. you played it before? No. Okay. So, so he kind of got in the rhythm of it a little bit. But yeah. anyway, there you go. That's my sexy father-in-law, who's uh, apparently not your boy toy. Now I'm going to go kill myself. <laughs> All right, Ariel, I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, since okay. You heard, uh, my father-in-law, Papa, <laughs> reading that. Uh, what song was that that he was uh, singing? That oh. was uh, a <laughs> that was Shawn Michaels' theme song. Very good. Very yeah. Good. <laughs> good job. I know the future. <laughs> 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 so I will peel back the curtain. Uh, Ariel actually has not even heard that. Uh, so, no, but, but, but I but I must have mentioned it. So I was putting him on the spot, hoping that he had no clue. But anyway, good job, Ariel. Ariel, do uh, before we go to uh, today's interview, have you? Uh, did you want to talk about your uh, medical stuff or no? Oh, I'm sorry. What was that? Do you want to talk? Your, your yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. All right, fine. good. Well, hey, let's talk about it. Why, why don't you fill everybody in? Okay. Well, um, as a lot of you already seen on the Breaking uh, Kayfabe Facebook group, um, I did disclose that I do have an onset of, I can't pronounce it, diabetic ret- retinitopathy. <laughs> retinop- retinopathy? Retinopathy. There you go. I'm not good with these uh, medical terms. Um, so they did see some, uh, I guess, cloudiness or, or some sort of thing going on in my eyes. Um, and also my A1C for for my blood sugar, my my levels, my hemoglobin, and all that that stuff. They're relatively high for what they you know should be um it should be under like six or six points or something like that mine is like 8.5 8.6 um which is already in the diabetic range i am not taking insulin right now um that's one of the things that i fear for for whatever reason i just don't want to take insulin so i'm trying i was trying my best for the past um let's see, eight years to control it. Um, I did really well back when I was first diagnosed in 2015 when I was 34 years old. And um, at that time, it was like, I don't know, for for some reason, something clicked and I just went all out with eating better, going to the gym and whatnot. And I'm trying to find that motivation again. And it's getting there. Um, I just, since COVID happened, I had to, I, uh, what's it called? Uh, stop my gym membership. So I have to start that one back up again. And these past three years, um, I have not been, uh, doing my due diligence with trying to, you know, uh, live a healthier lifestyle. And those three years I've gotten so used to becoming, the person that I was uh, when I didn't work out, when I just ate whatever I wanted and and the portions are too big and everything like that. So now it's by, it's coming back and biting me in the butt again. So um, I'm doing my best. I'm trying to – right now I've uh, decided to look into the Mediterranean diet <clears throat> and uh, – the DASH diet, which my doctor um, suggested to me all those years ago with a 
low sodium. Um, it, it's to prevent hypertension because I'm also I also have high blood pressure. Um, yeah, my dad's side of the family, we have uh, we have cancer running in the family, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, and baldness, male pattern baldness. Um, got all of that, I guess. No, just kidding. <laughs> well, except for the cancer part, but um, so I have to be extra careful with my health. Uh, I'm still really young. I mean, I'm 42 years old. I shouldn't be having any of these issues. Um, but here, here we are, and I'm, I'm, you know, doing my best. Um, my starting weight is 217 pounds, so I'm trying to lose at least 20 by august which is when i do my next round of blood work um i do have an eye upper not operation that's my mom i do have an eye um appointment in may which is like their earliest one that they can do for me um so from now till then i'm gonna try my best to drop some pounds um I have to talk to my doctor to see if there's any other kind of medication that I can can do or something that could modify the dosage of what I'm taking currently or or whatever they suggest. Um, so that's that. But I, you know, I thank everyone for their comments and their support in the Facebook group. It really means a lot to me. And I know it's, I, I was so like, should I even mention this to everybody? Should I put it out there? I was really hesitant to do that. But everything I've seen with everyone else that has aired their their things to the group, everyone's been really supportive. And that's what I need right now is a, a strong support group, um, people that would help me possibly help me like you know um be accountable for for my choices who make me you know be accountable for my choices or help me you know kick kick me in the butt if i need to if i need some motivation and i know there are other brother shippers out there that have similar conditions to um health conditions that i have and it's always nice to hear from their experiences or what they're going through or just give them some support that they might need to help uh, jumpstart their way to living a happy, healthy life. And I appreciate all the comments. I was at work reading them and replying to most of them. And uh, to be honest, I was tearing up uh, quite a bit. Uh, I was very touched by it. Um, I had to blame allergies in case somebody's like, why, why are your, your eyes all red and everything? Like, no, allergies. I always, I always blame allergies. Um, something that you probably don't know, I allow myself one good cry a month just to let everything out, right? So I already used up my good cry for March, the first day of March, and I forgot what it was about. But <laughs> um, I was, uh, it, it really moved me, it really touched me to to see all the support that um that i have and especially with uh with you know my girlfriend and 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 my family and all that too and my my other friends that actually know about it i didn't let i haven't let many people know but um (laughs) the brother shivers know but yeah I'm, i'm just very thankful and appreciative of each and every one of you um, except for you, Frankie, you told me to eat ass. What the heck? <laughs> Such a heel move, man. <laughs> well, you know, I, I gotta go against the grain. You know, that is everybody true. else that is, true. Put, everybody else is the, the mental idea. stuff, you know? Exactly, exactly. So um, I, I just, you know, had to throw out a little joke in there. And sort of, of course, <laughs> that made me laugh. I even showed my girlfriend that. She says, oh my God, Frankie. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, to be honest, uh, a, a person that really motivated me that actually kind of, as actually helped me also is uh, Shard. Um, we talked uh, that night, and then uh, 
you know, he was showing me some videos and and stuff like that about um, all these uh, different things that that I can do or 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 tips on how to to go about things like that. And um, you know, <laughs> every breakfast or every every like first meal I have, it's actually like cherry tomatoes and cucumbers and mrs dash and i got that from shard when you know he would post his food in the morning and it's it's like fruits and vegetables or something like that with some seasoning i actually got that from him and i tried that out and i actually like it so it um you know it's a good way to start my morning i don't really do carbohydrates or excess carbohydrates um for now trying to get used to that and um you know, just, uh, yeah, one, take it one day at a time. And I've done it before. I've lost 40 pounds in six months the first time. How much did you, did you gain it all back? No, I gained half of it back, roughly half. Oh, a little bit over half of it back. Wow. Okay. Since that time. Um, most of it was during um, COVID era. So What, what were you doing um, to, to drop the LBs? Uh, I was, main thing was portion control. That was the biggest thing that was, uh, like, the biggest weakness I have. And somehow, at that time, I got through it. I Oh, because the thing is, I measured everything. I weighed all my, the food. Um, I did meal prep. It was all, it was very, it took a long time. And it, it's very tedious, but, like, knowing roughly how many calories uh i'm ingesting in that meal the portion size and and making sure that i'm under a certain um amount of was was it, uh, carbohydrates and sodium what well, was the, that was the thing i was actually more concerned about not necessarily calories i actually put myself on a 1800 calorie uh, a day limit but I had to get my um, carbohydrates down to 25 grams a day, and that's that's really hard. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it, it is. Uh, um, sure, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> but but I, but I think the, I think the carbs are the are the main problems with the the diabetes, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, um, well I mean, I mean, any well, any, any big... sugar, any sugar in general, but. Yeah, and the thing also a lot um uh, along with that is the lack of exercise. So, you know, I'm I'm ingesting these carbohydrates, these sugars, and I'm not burning them. So that's a, that's an issue. Uh, if I, you know, am active, then yeah, I could have a little bit more carbohydrates, I could have a little bit more sugar. But the fact that I wasn't doing anything for the past three years and most of my life, to be honest, um got me to this point where I am right now. Now, as far as working out is concerned, all I did was walk. I like walk. I don't like running. I hate running. Um, I don't like, yeah, I just walk. I don't do any aerobics and stuff. Um, I just walk and do the elliptical. And then I incorporated a little weight training to it. Um, because of course, uh, weight training burns a lot more, <clears throat> a lot more fat, um, than just, cardio itself especially if you're doing uh weight training that involves the entire body like uh i guess squats or something like that instead of not not like doing isolated uh exercises like just working out your arms or your shoulders or your legs just having a total body uh workout would was beneficial for me so uh that along with um strict dieting or um, more like at the time it was a lifestyle change, um, changing my, my diet, uh, eating a lot more vegetables, eating less, um, carbohydrates and red meat because my cholesterol and my blood pressure and all that stuff. I also had to, um, to manage that actually dropped 40 pounds in six months. And, um, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. I, I dropped, you know what? When I first got my um my A1C levels, it was at eleven point two. That what? is really high. What right? were you eat? What were you eating? I mean, what, what, what? anything and everything. 
Oh, okay. The, I got that was like, that, yeah, that was like my, my entire life at that point, right? Just eating, not caring. And it's not like I gained, I was, I mean, I was at, my heaviest was at 242 pounds. Okay. And I didn't really look like it. Yeah. Because uh, you yeah. wore those big uh, gangster shirts, right? Gangster shirts and gangster pants and... <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> but um, throw, yeah. Throw, I just... <laughs> throw back your your gangster days. Exactly right. Uh, uh, I'll, 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 I hope I always remember that post that you posted of you and I don't know what you're wearing, but you said throw back to my Mexican days. Oh, that's when I just had when I had hair and I looked like a Mexican dude. <laughs> right, mainly that was yeah. like a graduation <laughs> picture actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So. What was I talking about? Um, ooh, whoa. I lost my train of thought now. So anyway, um, yeah, I was, my, my A1C was through the roof and my doctor is like, oh my God, I'm glad. Cause I started feeling symptoms. I was getting, I think it was, a uh, like my drop and spike in my blood sugar. I started feeling it. So I went to the doctor. That's when they found out. Um, I was at 11.2. What were your symptoms? Just, um, let's see. Well, I I don't know what like a spike in your blood sugar is. I mean, what well, it was like. uh, if I remember correctly, I was feeling like lightheaded. There were times when I was feeling lightheaded, or if I got up too quick, if I sat down and then I got up too quick, I would feel lightheaded, mm-hmm. or I would feel uh, like um very lethargic and um oh man what else mainly stuff like that and that kind of concerned me i was peeing a lot too um that's one of the symptoms it's excess uh peeing that's your body's trying to get rid of all the sugar that's in in your your system right so i was peeing a lot and i was like why i'm not even drinking too much and um so went to the doctor found out you know um, then my A1C was at 11.2, which is very high. He's like, if you don't do anything, we're going to put you on insulin. So that scared me. And I dropped to six point. My best was 6.5 in those six months from 11.2 to 6.5. Um, which so is still, would, which is still, I think pre-diabetic, I think. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then now it went back up to eight point, whatever it's at right now. Um, since then, but I was really proud of myself back then, you know, drop, drop the weight. Um, I don't know if you could, if you go through like my Facebook, um, pictures, there were some pictures where like, I was actually a bit thinner than, uh, back then. So anyway, um, yeah, I just got to do that again. And, um, I know I can do it. I've done it before. And, uh, uh, having, uh, that support group though, like I had back then, um, with my friends really helps. It helps, uh, helps me focus. I know that I put that stuff out there and I put a goal out that I want to lose, you know, 20 pounds or X amount of pounds or get my numbers down to this level. And I got to, I have to man up and do it or just, because yeah, I already put it out there. That's that's my goal. Um, my doctor said just drop to seven um, points right now, so I I, sh- I have to lose like one and a half points off my A one C, and then see where it goes from there. And uh, how long how long does that take? To, because your A one C is based on your is your average, uh, based on a, a certain amount of time, right? Your average uh, glucose level. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Back then, when I first got diagnosed, it was, uh, I think it was a, oh, was it a monthly period or a three-month period? It's one of those, whatever. It's um, it's it's a, over a period of time. Now, when I first uh, was diagnosed, I had to go in every month just to check that um, was, if there was any progress that I'm sticking to my diet and exercise since it was very new to me at the time. So my doctor wanted to make sure that, okay, 
you're good this month, but what about next month? I mean, you're improving this month. What about next month? Are you going to stop? Uh, are you not going to like exercise? Are you not going to like dieting? So he had me come in and and check every month, um, at least for the weight. Um, so I was dropping weight. Every three months, he had me take a, a blood test to see where I was at. So I was dropping the A1C a lot. Um, there were things that I, I, <laughs> that I was reading online back then, like bitter melon, <clears throat> bitter melon is supposedly a good, um, vegetable to eat, to lower your blood sugar. Now I hate bitter melon because mm. it's bitter. I don't like bitter foods, but I ate it because supposedly it was good for, well, it is good for you. It's a, it's a vegetable, but supposedly it would benefit um, with the lowering of the blood sugar. So I developed a palate for that. Now I love it. Then I found that there's bitter melon tea and I started drinking that. I actually have some in my pantry right now, which I'm going to drink uh, later on before I go to sleep. But that tastes like dirt. It tastes like water, like hot dirt water. <laughs> And it's disgusting, but I do it anyway. So hopefully, I think that helped me out also, uh, along with just eating right and making sure I I stay active. I walk 30 minutes um, during my break time, even if it's really cold outside. Or, oh, well, not when it's raining because I don't want to get sick, but um, I go out and uh, I you know take a walk during my breaks. I when I get hungry, I will just drink a lot of water or eat a handful of um, raw almonds, and that should uh, that should take care of it. Before, when I was hungry, I'd go to the vending machine and get like a bag of, bag of potato chips, or go to Seven Eleven, get a donut or whatever, mm. um, some uh, some candy uh, or like a granola bar and stuff like that. All that stuff's not good for you. Um, so I, I should have known. I mean, I, yeah. And, uh, but, um, I'm saying optimistic, especially after reading everybody's comments. I'm, ta I'm taking too much time with this, but, um, I'm staying optimistic, um, because of everybody's rooting for me and everybody has my back and I, and I appreciate it. And I love you guys. Um, and I want to do you guys proud. I want to, I want to beat this. I don't want to go, you know, I don't want to lose my eyesight, obviously. I don't want to lose my toes either if that, you know, whatever, whatever <laughs> stuff like that happens with uh, this kind of disease. But uh, I also don't want any other ailments happening to me, whether it's, uh, you know, heart disease, uh, bad kidneys, liver, whatever. Uh, none crabs. Of crabs. Gonorrhea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least the ones that we can you know cure right um, <laughs> but yeah i i want to do you guys proud i want to be an inspiration to people out there that might not have that support or that motivation and or help um yeah i just well, well here, here's something you may not know. You, you already are an inspiration for many people. No, I'm not. Am I? Nah. <laughs> I, well, maybe. That'd be cool, though. But uh, whatever it is, well, you know. Why do you say no? I, I, I don't know. A compliment. You, you're acting like a, um, uh, uh, I, I can't say it. I'll get canceled. You're acting, you're, you're acting like, a, you know, one, one of those people who, who can't take the compliments. I know. I can't take compliments. I'm sorry, Frankie. That's all right, bud. That's you all know right. Me. You, you, you are uh, an inspiration to many Thank people, you. myself included. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, you know, just the fact that you are open and you come out with this, this thing and you share your problems with us and you make yourself vulnerable, which guys aren't good at, you know, mm. us, us men aren't want to project that we're so masculine and we got our shit together and you know, everything's great and hunky dory. Right. Yeah. Even, yeah. even when, it, even when it's not. So, you know, th th that's inspirational that you're sharing this and, you know, you can put it out there and when, if, if you start to fail, people can say, 
damn it, Ariel, you know, you said you were going to get your shit together and, and now you're not. Exactly. Yeah. That's, um, <clears throat> that's, um, that's very important to me. I don't have any older siblings. I consider all of you guys, my older brothers. I don't have any older brothers. I have a younger sister and I'm her, you know, I'm, I'm that older brother for her, but I don't have anybody, any, uh, peers that, um, you know, that can kick me in the butt when I need to, except for my mom, she'll kill me, but, um, I don't have any older brothers to do that. So I consider you guys, my older brothers, my family, and, um, I'm going to do you guys proud. And you know what, to be honest, it's cliche to say, but if I can inspire at least one person to, for them to get off their butt and and help themselves to get themselves better then it would be worth it um no one's going to lose the weight uh but me no one's gonna go to the gym for me no one's gonna you know eat right for me and it's all all on me but if i can inspire somebody else to um get off their butt and do the things that they have to do to to get better and feel better, then it'd be worth it. Well, good. Uh, you know, I, I'm also uh, trying to eat a little healthier and be a little more active mm-hmm. and try and uh, lose some weight. I, and, and the COVID, I, uh, well, I put on about 30 pounds since I've moved here. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle to drop it off. It's a struggle to eat healthy and, uh, and and maintain that uh in wilmington this past weekend i um gained about five pounds Ooh. and yesterday when i weighed i uh, was down two so um and but it's but it you know it, it is a struggle and i mean i try and avoid things like bread and um I had a friend um, right when I moved here who was diagnosed with diabetes Mm -hmm. and he had uh, called and told me that his, um, he couldn't get an erection. And so I uh, took that opportunity to uh, tease him and (laughs) of course. (laughs) Yeah. And so I I told him that, um, he probably had an enlarged prostate and he should just give himself a, a, a coffee enema every day. And then after about a week, I called him out and said, I'm just kidding. You probably have diabetes. Go to the doctor. Mm. And so he went to the doctor and had diabetes. Oh, wow. But, you know, it made me feel good knowing that I had him sticking things in his butthole. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Frankie! But yeah, he went, and he was—he's about you know six one, but he was about three forty, mm-hmm. and and he got down to like one eighty five. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and he was—he was playing pickleball every day when I was there. He and I would play tennis, and then after I left, he didn't have anybody to play tennis with him, so he joined the pickleball crew, mm-hmm. and. He really was eating super healthy and would would not would only eat like stuff from Whole Foods, which you know I think is a little unnecessary. Right. Um. And the other thing they did that really helped him out was intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. But you think, but you you think about it, you know, it's if you are uh, eating too much and your and your blood sugar is always high. Well, if you don't eat, obviously it's going to come down low, right? Right. So it's uh, the, uh, that's obviously going to going to work, and that's something I'm trying uh, because uh, I have one person that I follow on the YouTube says you know the, the intermittent fasting and and getting down to just one meal a day uh, will help you lose weight. Well, obviously, so and, and I and I heart back to my high school wrestling days, and and I used to starve myself and I, I never want to get back there to where I'm starving. Uh, back then I was five ten and 116 pounds. Mm, oh yeah. And so, uh, I, I, right now I'm sitting about two twenty five. Mm-hmm. So I'm a hundred pounds heavier than, you know, uh, than, than what I was in high school. Oh, wow. I see. Kind of crazy, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'd I'd like to lose forty pounds, and and that's what I'm doing. Uh, you know, when I I had some health problems back in 2014, 2015, somewhere around there, uh, and, and the, I went to a doctor, and he told me I had insulin resistance, and uh, did a bunch of tests on me, and he said, "Hey, you got to turn it around, or you're or you're screwed, pal." Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things he told me was that you know d- don't just do cardio; you have to like build muscles. Muscles helps. Uh, do something with the glucose and yes. that's, that's in your blood. So building muscles is important to someone that's trying to lose weight and trying to get their blood pressure, the, the blood, blood sugar levels down. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, sometimes it'll increase the blood pressure because you are working out. Um, you know, you are building muscle and it's a lot of uh, resistance training. So you you will probably see a spike in the blood pressure but that's temporary because you are straining your body to you know lift heavy things or, or whatnot or you know resistance training yeah. uh, but in the long run yeah uh, building muscle burns a lot more fat than just doing cardio alone um now my body type i think uh so my body type is i have skinny kind of muscular looking legs like i have big calves um and i have like skinny arms but all my fat is like in my cheeks and my gut area so that's where it's being stored now i see the potential like if i do uh lose the weight if i do gain the muscle i can actually kind of see myself um in a semi-athletic body whatever i i mean uh, when I was younger in high school, I did try out for uh, as a running back for football, and I pretty I did pretty well with that. Except that I didn't like running, <laughs> so I just didn't want to go back to practice and do running a mile in the in the summertime and all that stuff or whatnot. So I was just like forget it. I don't want to do this. But um, so you're more of a walking back. I'm a walking back. Yeah, <laughs> I'm walking back. To the locker room because I'm useless. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, you, you're absolutely right with the whole, uh, you know, doing, uh, building muscle versus uh, just doing cardio. Cardio is fine, but yeah, it's, you're not, it's uh, going to be a little bit more difficult to lose all that weight and or keep it off. All right, Errol, let's go to this week's interview. This is uh, conversations with an old uh, Army buddy. He was my roommate uh, way back in the day. And uh, we had a really good time uh, talking. Uh, probably not the best interview uh, or conversation, <laughs> I should say, because it was you know basically, you know, remember this, remember this, remember mm-hmm. this. But I had a good time, and uh, I hope he did too, of uh, reminiscing from our, our days as being roommates in the Army. And we'll go to that right now. Everyone, I am very pleased to be with one of my longtime friends. I think we're friends, right? Oh, yeah. This week. <laughs> this week. Um uh, that I've known since the year of 1993. I am with Evan Sean Tip, the Marcus Alexander of Buff Bagwell Burger. He's flexing. You can't you can't see that, but he is flexing. Yeah, uh, Evan, I, I wanted to have you on because uh, I, I was just thinking about uh, wrestling and the wrestling in my life. And let me just tell you a little bit about what what I do. Uh, Evan, do, do you know where I live now? Um, uh, some trailer park in Florida. There we go. That's my boy. Yep. So uh, Evan and I were in the military together, and so you'll hear him give me a whole bunch of shit because that's that's what we did way back then. Uh, <laughs> yes, I I do live in Florida. I do not live in a trailer park. Even though it's okay if you do, because there's a lot of nice trailer parks in Florida. Um, Evan, you and I met in about the year of uh, 93, probably about Mm -hmm. February. You were, uh, I think, my second roommate when I was in the military. 
Yeah, uh, it was the second one uh, right after McNeil. Uh, yeah, well, well, McNeil was yours. My first one was Dozy. And I was just telling um, somebody this the other day. It popped in my head how, like, uh, how we almost, like, you know, I almost killed that guy because he stabbed me. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> so, so, Evan, and, uh, I, I, I don't know, before you tell that story, could, could you please tell everyone, like, how long you were in the military, from what years and what years? I was in the military um, from um, active duty from 1991 till 2013. Uh, I was an infantryman. Um, for the last uh, couple of years, I worked at uh, Third Army, uh, and we did like coordination missions and stuff like that. So it was kind of boring the last couple of years, but. Uh, uh, and now I am retired. I was a corrections officer for a while, and now I'm in my last semester of gunsmithing school. Okay, so corrections officer, much like your favorite wrestler, what was their name? Uh, I believe the big boss man. There we go. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, you and I met, uh, and you had a roommate before you who had narcolepsy. Yes. It, last name, McNeil, which in the military, last names are first names, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't uh, uh, remember his first name, nor do I care. It's just like uh, his, his his name will always stick in my memory. <laughs> and, and so, w what was the infamous incident that happened between you two? Well, I'm not so sure if he had narcolepsy or he just didn't go to bed at night because uh, <laughs> it was about like two in the morning, and he was playing some some shitty music and eating ramen noodles with a metal fork out of a uh, canteen cup. So it was making the screeching noises as he was eating it. Yeah, yeah, because it's because scra it's scraping. It's the metal on the metal contact. Yes, it's so it's I worse. Said, it's worse than chalkboard, right? Worse than his on chalkboard. Oh yeah, and then um, I uh, I politely asked him, you know, to turn it down, you know, so I could get some sleep, and uh, he said he would. And then as soon as I laid down, he turned it back up again. So. Um, I uh, went back over there and uh, took his radio and uh, smashed it against the wall. Uh, probably not the most uh, mature thing I could have done, but uh, that upset him. And uh, at the time, he was eating the ramen noodles, so he had that big metal fork in his hand. And so we started fighting, and he jabs me in the elbow with a, with a with a metal fork, and he bends it, and I still got a big old scar on my right my left elbow, and. Uh, I'm not normally a violent person, but I, I was just so angry. I like grabbed him by his throat and I, I, I picked him up off the floor against the wall, and um, and I saw his eyes bulging and he's made like a like a gurgling sound, and then something in my brain says, you know, like you know, you probably don't want to go to prison over this guy. So I let him go and he drops to the floor, and um, I don't remember what I did for the rest of the night, but I know I didn't sleep. <laughs> but well it, and no one's going to see the video of this but, but but you're not a petite fella uh, i'm uh i'm about five two about a hundred and uh, five <laughs> hey yeah you, come on you're not terrence michael duffy come on dude <laughs> <laughs> uh you're, you're like six two yeah you, you were probably 210 back then about about two twenty five, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, <laughs> but 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 he's like he's like one of those guys that's like uh, really large and uh, I don't want to say ominous, but like imposing. But uh, a sweetheart of a guy, really nice. And you're a nerd. You're a big Star Trek fan. I uh, I confirm or I don't confirm or deny any of this nerd business. Right, right, right. But, but, but if, if someone's annoying you, you, you would definitely, uh, <laughs> nobody can see my shirt, right? 
<laughs> no one can see your shirt, which is like a Jurassic Park with a uh, alien figure in it. And this is LV426. So yes, he's a, he's a nerd. Uh, so so you and I met shortly after that. McNeil was gone by the time I got to the unit, and I was roommates with Duffy for a little bit. Uh, not Duffy, uh, Dozy. And uh, then they moved me into your room, and so I, I think I was like 19 years old when you and I moved into rooms together. I, how old are you? I am 49. I have to think. Uh, I have to think about it because I always round up, and I always say fifty. I'm fifty, but I'm I'm really only forty nine. You're not that much younger than me, so yeah, you're like a year younger than me. So two, I think it's two years. You're born September the eighth of uh, nineteen seventy one, and then I was born November of uh, uh, nineteen seventy three. I was born in seventy two, so in ninety three I was twenty one. 20 or 21. You're, on what. you're 21 uh, because you would buy me the beer. Yeah, I was 21 in, in September of 93. Would you charge me the beer tax? Come on. Well, you know. I, I, had, I, had, I had to give up one-sixth of my beers when he would buy me the beer. Hey, I was taking a risk. <laughs> 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 I was taking a risk every time I scraped metal, my, my fork onto my canteen <laughs> cup around you. Yeah, only at a very indecent hour at night. <laughs> <laughs> you had an annoying habit, uh, but... Uh, oh, please tell really me. Pissed, you never really pissed me off. It was like, you know, him, because I hated him anyway. But... Um, what was my annoying habit? Please tell me. Well, uh, I believe, like, like every morning for about a year, at least a year and a half. Stupid cat. Every morning for at least a year and a half, I uh, woke up to candle boxes, candle boxes far behind. <laughs> so that that song is like you know, like imprinted in my brain as well. <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I guess Frankie's up. But one thing that was unique about you is you had been in prior service. You had uh, you, you had been in as a reservist and you had one MOS, which for those that don't know, MOS is, is like your job. And, and so, uh, what was the first job that you'd have in the military? I was a medic. Yeah, combat medic. And and, and then you came active duty, and uh, you um, became infantryman. <laughs> I guess I realized I wanted to cause injuries, not uh, prepare them. <laughs> 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 yeah and uh you're also a unique fellow uh because you enjoy country music i don't think that's so unique anymore <laughs> <laughs> can i tell that story uh so uh you had went away i think to ranger school right yeah well, and for those that don't know, Ranger School is a huge deal. It's a very, very big deal. Uh, you, you go from wherever you are, you, you basically box all your stuff up, your wall lockers, you lock them up, and you had left one of part of the wall locker unlocked. And I don't remember what I was looking for, but it definitely wasn't like dildos or anything like that. It was, I don't know, uh, your TA-50 or whatever. I, I don't know. I was looking for something. And I, I, I saw your wall locker ajar, and I looked in there, and these country music CDs fell out. And so then you come back from Ranger School, which was hell, right? It was, would you describe it as hell? How would you describe it? Uh, it was difficult, but uh, okay, difficult. So, so, uh, but, but you remember you had that really bad burn on your hand. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, this stuff's not easy. I mean, you go through all these different phases. I mean, not everyone can be a ranger, right? And, and, and you come back and then I say, you know, we're talking and, oh, welcome back. Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. You, 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 you know, you, you made it through. And then I said, hey, what's up with all these country music CDs up in top of your wall locker? And you were like, uh, <laughs> what country music cds those aren't mine and the look <laughs> on your face is just like i don't like country music right oh uh, yes but uh i do have to confess my favorite song is uh george Strait's great greatest hits volume two uh song six uh how's that go uh george george Strait's greatest hits volume two song six yeah how's it start though don't you remember Buckley? Yeah, oh, I remember, but how's the song start? Let's sing it together. Uh, it's, uh, uh, nobody is right mind with a lefter. Yes, yes. How, how's <laughs> it start? Do you remember how it starts? Uh, I think it goes like, I burn with desire. desire? Yeah, there we go. Um, I burn with desire. Yeah, uh, hard. To, it's hard to remember. Yeah, uh, well, I know. Well, uh, but, but, you know... Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to the Buckley story there later on. We won't, we won't. My heart fans the fire of that old flame that burns inside of me. Yes, there we go. I knew you would know it. I knew you would know it. I cried uh, when I left her. Uh, I cried to forget her. Yeah, now I cry to forget her. <laughs> <laughs> what a man, a fool I am to believe nobody in his right mind would have left her. <laughs> and then you finally came out you're like you know it was a is a huge revelation that you're like oh wait a minute i do like country music and and you told everybody oh, you, you know hey you like country music and 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 uh do you remember the cowboy hat you had oh yeah where did you get uh, that yeah. first cowboy hat i don't remember where i got it I uh, got it from some guy. <laughs> so, it was some guy at some bar we were at. And you said, I like your hat. And he said, well, you can have it. And you're like, really? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and you're wearing your weekly world news shirt. And, and he gives you that hat. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think I still got that shirt uh, somewhere. I don't know if yeah. it fits it. And then your boots, your, your your cowboy boots. You remember where you got those? Oh yeah, I do. I do. What, what I, was his name? Oh shit! Here we go. Aaron E. Bates. Oh, Bates. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big guy. I don't, I, I don't know where he was from. You, you know, that's a big thing in the military. You always remember where everyone's from. What'd you say? Probably from Texas or something. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's probably over there, you know, in the, in the Midlands. Uh, but but you, you, and you end up bottom. You bought them for one hundred and sixty-five dollars. I don't think it was that much. Yeah. No, no, no. They were one sixty-five. I remember. Yeah, that doesn't sound like me. Uh, <laughs> you were probably knocking down a few bucks. Well, you know, like you know, like I wouldn't even buy like that. You know, like. But, but I wouldn't spend that much money for shoes now. <laughs> well, now it's different. Now it's different. You, you, you're, you're, uh, maybe you just came back from Ranger School and you had all that money saved up. I guess. Uh, so uh, you, you and I are roommates, and then we start watching wrestling. Do you, do you oh, remember? Yeah. Do you remember anything about the wrestling that we were watching? Oh yeah, that was, that was good times. Well, you know, like, uh, where was the wrestling from that we watched? Uh, well, um, watched WCW and WWF. Um, what was the local one that we watched? Do you remember? Oh, that? USWA. Yes, yes. I remember like the local wrestling. Yeah, oh, that was so fun to go down to Nashville and uh, to see them, you know, in action. Yeah, who who are some of your your guys that you remember seeing, or some of the guys that uh, that, that were your favorites on the USWA? Uh, I remember uh, PG thirteen. Yeah, wh uh, which what were their names? Do you know? 
J- JC uh, Ice and Wolfie D. JC Ice and uh, oh, okay. uh, Wolfie D. Wolfie D. Yeah, I was thinking D, but I couldn't remember. <laughs> and, and we have the picture, right? The, the the picture where Wolfie's just a little taller than me, so he stood next to you, and then uh, I was taller than JC Ice, so we stood next to each other. And, and we took the pictures with them posing with the hubcaps that I've got somewhere. Oh, yeah. And I got a picture of you, like, acting like you're stealing a hubcap in Nashville. Uh, you, you, do you remember? The, the, uh, so this is on 2nd Avenue. And the, uh, the someone started knocking on the window. Like, they actually thought I was trying to steal a hubcap or steal a t- <laughs> I don't know what they were doing. And, and then, of course, we – do you remember the fight that we almost saw there? Hmm. Was it was that lady who's like you know we kept calling her the uh, uh, Jezebel? I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it, yeah, but, but that that was that was a guy you remember? It was like a very large African American guy, and uh, this guy from the stands said, "Get in the ring, fat boy." Oh yeah. Uh, I don't remember it as much as you do, though. I, 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 I do vaguely remember it. Well, well, it was like uh, the the uh, I, I don't want to say the high points of my life, but it was the high points of my life for a long time. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, obviously now I've I've had some uh, very very high uh, high points, but yeah, it, it, and then we had uh, the lady that sat in front of us. Uh, that uh you remember where she represented uh yeah like uh the fat lady that represented nashville yeah and and that was doug gilbert that that came up with that line Uh, and and so what what we're talking about is that we would go to the nashville fairgrounds and uh you know and probably a, a year and a half or whatever we would went there probably four or five times and I've told the story before, but but we won tickets. Do you remember us winning tickets? I don't. I don't remember that, but I do well, know. We well, won. I, I I won them, and it was uh, you, if you bought a program, you had a chance to win a ticket. And then you had to go up to the uh, ticket office, and they said, "Oh, you you win it for the next uh, wrestling match or whatever." And uh, so the lady that sort of running things back there her name was teeny and so when i went up to the window uh, i said uh, hey uh and i had one and they said well it's for the next show here at the fairgrounds which is i don't know the next week or whatever and and i said well, oh we're going to be deployed uh, i don't know whether we're going to panama or where we were going at that time and probably and I, panama yeah and, and and so the lady said Hey, Tini, that he's in the army and he's not going to be here uh, for the next show. And and Tini, quote unquote, said, "Oh well, uh, just give him uh, sixteen dollars." And so she gave me the money for it. Well, that Tini was Jeff Jarrett's mom, which we didn't know back then, right? Because we didn't okay. we didn't have any kind of internet. You remember Double J, Jeff Jarrett? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, we didn't know back then that this teeny that this lady was talking, and, and I, you, you know, the things I remember or the things I forget. I mean, seriously, it's crazy, right? But but I remember talking to that lady, and then I remember teeny saying, "Oh, we're just giving sixteen dollars. It was eight dollars a ticket is what we paid for the ringside seats." And uh, so that that teeny was Jeff Jarrett's mama, which was uh, I mean grandma, which was Jerry Jarrett, who was one of the bookers and owners. That was his uh, mother, and which uh, Jana and I, my wife, who, who you haven't met, but we uh, you see us there on the Facebook. We met Jerry a year or two ago at the the fan fest here in uh, Florida. But that just brings it full circle around of you and I hanging out in 1993 to, you know, having a conversation of me talking with Jerry Jarrett, who coincidentally, uh, Jerry Jarrett, when he came here to this fan fest, uh, and, and it's north of Tampa is where it is. It's about 45 minutes from here. He drove up from Sanibel Island 
which Jan and I go uh, every summer to see our friends and we stay there at Fort Myers or Sanibel and we go over there to uh, Casa Ebel is the name of the condos that are there. They're timeshares because it's so expensive to, to live there. So they have timeshares and, and Jerry Jerry owns. And so does Jerry the King Lawler. Or he used to, I don't know if he still does or not, uh, a, a unit there in that place. And uh, then this year with that big hurricane that came through, Hurricane Ian, it wiped all that junk out in there. They're having to rebuild. So that just brings it full circle of that. And, and Jerry Jarrett was one of the nicest people I, I've ever met in my entire life. He was, he was really nice. And uh, I didn't get to ask him anything about Jeff Jarrett and his double J and why he wore those blinky glasses that he always. <laughs> hey, um, do you ever, did you ever find out if uh, Eddie Gilbert's mother got her, got her van back? <laughs> Well, what, what I learned, and I, I didn't remember it from then, but I'm sure that we heard it or whatever, but Eddie Gilbert died in 1994. Yeah. And, and I didn't leave Fort Campbell until the, the summer of 95. So I, but I, did, I don't remember us ever talking about it or that ever being a thing, you know? Yeah. But, but it's pretty crazy because we saw him there at the fairgrounds in Nashville and you know on tv and that whole thing with jerry lawler and, and then you know he passed away in puerto rico right after that uh so uh you and i we, we would go there to the fairgrounds we uh were roommates for a while and uh then um uh, some of the folks that were there with us that that hung out in our crowd we had, uh, oh, you mentioned Buckley. Let's, let's go ahead and tell a, a, a Buckley story. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I probably wasn't very nice. You know, I didn't think about it, but. Uh... Well, well, you know what? It was a different world. Let's say that, right. It, it, you know, it was 1994, 95, 93. Yeah, he and was always. It was just so broken up about his, like, you know, his ex-wife, you know, couldn't get over her, you know, and, like, he'd play, like, sad songs on repeat, and we'd make fun of him. That, that, well, that That's true, but but he, he was a, a, an attractive guy. I think he was from Arkansas. You remember? Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, I think he was from Arkansas. Yeah, and, and he was a attractive guy. He had a good field, and he, he, don't take this the wrong way, but he sort of shit on you a little bit. And, and that you and he were going to ranger school at the same time. Remember? Oh yeah. Like some, some, like he broke something. He couldn't go. And what, what, he went and he didn't make it past zero week. That's what it was. Oh, like, like I can't remember what happened. Uh, I, I think he realized he had a vagina. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but, but he, you know, he there was, was out. He, he, you know, he was in Fort Benning. Yeah, <laughs> he, he was very uh, arrogant, uh, and, and he had a good build. He was a, a good-looking guy, and, and but but yes, he was emotionally weak. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But but he, you know, he was acting like he was going to go and be the super stud, and you, you know, you'd be the one that didn't make it. It was you and he that went together, but. Uh, <laughs> He was hung up. His wife, uh, he had gotten the military. Her name was Dana. Do you remember that? Dana! Yes, it's Dana. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about Buckley. Do you remember uh, Buckley and any of his sayings? Um. I, I do remember when uh, he was uh, he was angry. He'd like be like, "I'm gonna cut you up into one inch squares and staple you to the shower curtain." Yeah, that's true. That's true. He he did say that. That was. <laughs> do, do, do you think in today's military um, that they're saying that now or no? Probably not. Yeah, I I would agree. Uh, I, I would uh, think that they are, are not saying that. Um, so, oh, actually, you know, 
You reminded me. I actually forgot he. I, we went down there together. Yes. I actually forgot that. And now I remember what happened. It was like it was like during the the, the PT test. Like um, they were doing push ups, and they're very strict on like you know like how far you go down and how far you go up, and um, they, they they kept not counting his push ups. And like the the standard was you had to do like 52 and get up. And he ended up doing like over 80. Um, And they like didn't count like half of them. So like he uh, failed the PT test. That was like the first day. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. That, yeah, that, that sounds about right. Pretty crazy, right? And and to me, it looked like he was doing them right, but you know, I mean, sometimes you know you get the wrong, you know, RI, which it, RI is as a ranger instructor, you know, like you know, sometimes you know they don't like your face, and you know, you fail. So you know, like, I mean, he was definitely was like you know strong enough, you know, to do to do pushups because he did like like almost like twice of what he was supposed to do, but you know, they didn't count them. They didn't count them. Yeah, yeah, he was a stud. I, I mean, he would do like I don't know, I don't remember what we would have to do, but he, he, I think he did like eighty push-ups. I, I, I don't remember, but uh, what our standards were, but like he was, if he did like like eighty-two push-ups, so you know that was like the hundred, and like I remember, like he kept going. He like I think he like almost got to a hundred or just past a hundred on like one of the PT tests. He was like a machine. Yeah. And so it's crazy that he uh, wasn't able to do it with the, uh, the you know, the whole uh, thing with uh, the, 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 the school. So, um, so let's talk a little bit more about uh, places that you lived and you, you lived uh, where, where did you start out living? Tell everybody wh- where you came from. I was born in Joplin, Missouri. And then uh, when I first joined the Army, I went to Fort Campbell for basic training. I uh, went home back home and did reserves and then decided I wanted to go full time. So then I went to Fort Benning. And from there, I went to Fort Campbell. And then I like had some thoughts about like, you know, like, what I really wanted to do. So I like got out for about a year after I left Fort Campbell and I came back and I it was, then I, I went to Hawaii. I was stationed there for what stationed there for a while. Like my two oldest kids were born there. And then I left there, went to Fort Benning as a, as an IOBC instructor, which is an infantry officer basic course. I was instructor people who like, you know, were, uh, you know, like officers who were going into like the infantry. Um, then from there, I went to Fort Bragg. Then, oh, I went to Fort Drum. Uh, there's Fort Drum somewhere in there. <laughs> so we have one of our friends that is uh, his wife, just uh, she's a captain, she's a doctor, and just uh, they just moved to Fort Drum, like, I don't know. Uh, a few months ago. And so I'm, uh, I'm sure she's like, you know, like, you know, shivering pretty hard right now. now. Y- y- yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been horrible up there, but I, I do remember you going up there, but you were at Fort Campbell when I left, which I left in 95 and went to Korea. And um, I think, think you were still at fort campbell when i came back oh oh you got out for a minute do you remember that yeah um like my son's in korea right now where at in korea uh oh put me on the spot camp humphreys it's like like south of seoul across the river and how's he likes it oh he really likes it he's like uh He's trying to learn Korean. He's like trying to immerse himself in the culture. Yeah. I think he even likes kimchi. Oh, he's in the infantry? No, he's um 
Apache helicopter mechanic. Oh, wow. Okay. So he got there um, sometime in June. So uh, so his, his rotation will be over uh, this summer. So I'm not sure where we'll he'll be, we'll be going from there. Wow. He might even be stationed here at Fort Bragg. That'd be cool. I'm looking at Camp Humphreys right now. I'm zooming out. You know, uh, Korea is an interesting place because it's a whole nother country. That's a that's a Forrest Gump line. It is indeed a whole nother country. And and what countries did you travel to? Oh, well, let's see. I've been to. Oh, Camp Pomfrey's down way down the south. So he's uh, probably a couple hours from Seoul, not far from a coast. Good for him. You know, when I, when I landed, I, I don't remember where I landed, but it may have been Seoul. But when wherever we landed, I, I remember. Everywhere that we stopped, I was hoping that that would be my stop. And then when we got to Camp Casey, which you've heard of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I I was hoping that that would be my final stop. And then the next one after that was Camp Greaves, which is where I was, which was horrible. I was with, uh, do, do you remember Navarro? Yes. Navarro, he wasn't in our company, but he was friends with Cantu. And Cantu, you know what he was famous for, right? Mm. Yes. Um, geez. Um. So Cantu was my roommate at some point. It was me, Cantu, and Cuthbert. You remember Cuthbert? Oh, yeah. yeah. He had the really stinky feet. Blue black. <laughs> also known as Zero Dark 30. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, before I forget, did I tell you that I found uh, Daniel Sean Patrick online? Uh, you did like a long time ago. Did you ever contact him? I sent him a message. I don't think I got anything back. <laughs> yeah. How about that, huh? You and him used to play uh, Street Fighter. Oh, Remember? yeah. Oh, my, my uh, voodoo power. So this guy, Patrick, He's apparently at one, at one period in his military career, he was a stud. Do you remember telling me that? Oh, yeah, like uh, Uncle Big Bad or something. It, well, well, like he was like uh, – uh, it was a hard charger, you know, he was in like good shape and he really cared about it. But then like when he got close to him getting out, he just didn't give a crap. And and that's when he was just this, he, he was this fun. There wasn't many like fun loving guys in our unit. Right. But, but Patrick was one of the guys who was just like, he'd have a good time. And he, he, he was happy. He was happy go lucky. And they would always give him a hard time. Like, Oh, you know, your BDUs aren't pressed or your shoes aren't shined enough. And you know, he was getting out. He really, he really didn't give a crap, but I, I found like a Facebook profile that was his and, and I, I didn't message him. I, I didn't really know what to say. You know I me, mean? I'm not the best with the words. Yet you have a podcast. Well, I, I'll just say uh, th- this podcast I started because uh, Jen and I we're, we're living here and we started going to this thing, the CWF Legends Fan Fest. And we went there and I realized all the guys that were in this Facebook group that I'm a part of that's because of this other podcast, which is called Breaking Cave with Boucher DeBerry, were so cool and interesting. And the, the other thing, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. All right, cool. Sorry about that. Uh, it's there's a time limit on this thing. So what I realized is like, these guys are all so cool. And, uh, you know, I, I lost my dad a couple of years ago, uh, right before Jan and I got married. And, and I think that it would be awesome. And I, 
well, let me back up. So when I was in Wilmington before, when I was living there in Curry Beach, uh, I had started a podcast to record like all these businesses so I could drum up real estate business. And I thought that it would be awesome to be able to record people like my mom, my, my relatives, so that I could record their voices and the things they love and have it recorded and put it on YouTube. And, you know, once it's on YouTube, it's there forever, right? So you can have videos or you can have this person talking. So that's why I started it was because all my friends at, in the wrestling world and this group are so interesting and so cool that I felt that the whole world should hear their stories of what's going on. And so I started that for them, not for me, because I don't, I don't, I'm a horrible speaker. And, and so then now it's like, okay, well, who else in my life do I think has stories that the world would benefit from? Or you think about your kids and that, that I've known since before they were born. Oh, and then you have your your nephew. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know his real name. Uh, Crandall. Sean. <laughs> right. It, it, it's like if, if you hear <laughs> stories about you and your life and how you lived it. I mean, it would be so cool. You, you know, and it's like you look at Sheridan or Ethan if they have kids or, or or stepkids or whatever. Like my kids, my kids know nothing about my dad because they were here before he was before they even he had passed before they even got a chance to meet him you know so they know nothing of him he well, he had a stroke in 2012 so talk, seeing him would have been useless for my two kids right so anyway that's why i started it was i started it because these people in my life have really interesting stories and i think that their stories and who they are as a person should be preserved in history and so eventually I'll, these will all be put on the YouTube. And if someone Googles Evan Berger in 50 years, they'll be able to hear you talk about what we're talking about. That's a, that's a noble endeavor. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's the least I can do. I, I've never, I, I wasn't always the most noblest of men. Yeah. Who among us was. <laughs> well, Buckley. <laughs> so, 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 hold on, hold on. In our in our unit, we had two Buckleys. One was what we called one Buckley, and the other one was what do we call the other Buckley? Oh, mm. you remember him? Uh, you have to refresh my memory. Uh, so he was in second platoon. He had glasses, and and so one Buckley was the white Buckley, Jason. Oh yeah, the and the, the other one was, called was he was Black Buckley, right? Yeah. <laughs> so can you imagine in today's world referring to someone as Black Buckley? Well, you probably can, but but I bet <laughs> Ethan can't, right? Well, you know, it's like it, it was never anything racial. It's just like you know, like distinguished. You know, it's it it a description, right? Yeah. yeah, it was a descriptor, not like any kind of like you know anything derogatory, right? Yeah. Do you remember Buckley? Uh, uh, his name was Ray. R Ray Buckley getting in trouble. Do you remember what happened with him? <sighs> so he was over at Champions. The uh, the the um, enlisted club that was near our place and he was out on the dance floor dancing and a <laughs> glock or something fell out of his pocket oh yeah oh wow all right now listen i want you to think back you and he were in a trailer up in Hopkinsville or Oak Grove, somewhere around I there. Forget Buckley. I know Buckley. Like we hang out together. We hung out together all the time. I know, right? So, it's so like it took me a second to like you know jog my memory. Yeah. So, so I want you to think about it. Do you remember you and he being in like this trailer, hanging out, and an incident happened? Yeah, I was with this uh, guy. Uh, uh, he was in our unit too. I can't remember his last name though. And like his girlfriend, like 
we called her the, the chicken head because she was crazy. And we were just drinking, and she like all of a sudden comes like goes into like his bedroom, comes out with like a Mac 10 and starts waving it around. And then what happened? <laughs> and then I like and then I like took it from her. And then <laughs> <laughs> and like I didn't even push her or touch her, you know, but she f- like fell on the but she fell on the sofa and she was like super pissed. And then I guess she made a call because her like cousins and her brother showed up and like, you know, wanted to kill me or something. You know, and I had to like, you know, explain to them what happened. And then they're, oh yeah, that's cool. She is crazy. She would do something like that. And and do you remember what you called her? I, I called her chicken head, but you know <laughs> chicken head ho. Uh, and for those of you wondering uh, that's a term of endearment (laughs) Uh, yeah yeah it's like they were like super pissed, but then you know when they got explained to, they're like, "Hey, cool!" And then they start drinking with us. Well, so. it may not have been that you explained it. They may have seen like how large you are, mm. and, and they may not have wanted to throw down. You know, I mean, because y- you are, um, you you were like huge. I mean, you were. <laughs> I mean, you, you were six two, six three, six four. I, I don't know, but you were and, and, and had the girth and the big, big wide shoulders. I'll, I'll post a picture in the, the group when I uh, post this. But yeah, you, you were a very large guy, but you were the, the gentle giant. Yeah, you know, like I, you know, I never was much for fighting. You know, I'm. I mean, I'll do it, but, you know, uh, not, you know, like, you know, because I'd rather drink and have fun than, than, you know, like, you know, than throw hands. But but you'll throw hands if you have to, right? If I have to, but, you know, that's not really my first option. So there in Clarksville, Tennessee, uh, we have a, a guy in our group. His name is Tony Botts, and he used to own a uh, body shop or auto shop there on um, – I can't remember the, the road, like Riverside, maybe. But if you remember, we went down the hill to Clarksville uh, to the Taco Bell. Yeah. And you make a right. His his shop was there on the left after you made that right, like over there by that park, right? Yeah. Do you, do you, do you remember, um, uh, well, well, I, not to talk about it, but the, the murders that happened at the Taco Bell? Oh yeah, yeah, do. Uh, uh, and then, do you remember uh, what we built there behind the Taco Bell? Oh, the Red Roper. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know if I ever told. I don't know if I ever told you this, but that was a fun place to go. Yeah, well, so so, could you tell everybody how we got roped into no pun intended uh, building that thing? Well, our first sergeant, like either it was part owner or the manager or something like that, and uh, and we like we like built up the bar, like the bars and the the dance the, floor, the dance floor, like you know, like the. I remember, like before the bar was built up, he like he like posed by where it's supposed to be and put his foot up. He was like, "Yeah, this is where the, this is where the bar is going to be. You can put your foot up like this." You ask him, you said, you said, first sergeant, what, what's this thing here for underneath? It's like a foot rail. And he goes, oh, so you can lean up on the bar like this. You know, and he did the, yeah. he did the bones. <laughs> His name was Van Hendricks. And uh, Van he, Hendricks. Um, the, the, I think he was the first first sergeant that we, uh, like official one that we got after I was there. There was like a guy who had been like the third platoon yeah, uh, platoon sergeant who was the active first sergeant. Then uh, first sergeant Van Hendricks came, and he was old. And, and, and when I say he's old, he's probably younger than me now. I'm yeah. I'm I'm 49. He he might have been early 40s, but he had been to Vietnam. He um, ha- had broken his back on a jump and and there got out, got back in, and um, 
he had been special forces he had been ranger and he was this uh very weathered old old man and you remember he would always show up the to <laughs> he would always show up to a formation wobbly and i didn't know if that was because of his like unsteady legs of having things broken and being old in the military or if he was drunk and we always theorized that he was drunk right <laughs> that was probably a little bit of both yeah and, and uh so he uh, was uh, one of the owners of the bar or the owner of the bar and was supervising building. And we were, I don't remember the cycles that we were in, but we were in whatever cycle where you, you know, you just go do bullshit work, which we all hated. Right. It was like, yeah. you, you do you clean up some part of the post, pick up garbage. And, and so he used us and we went and we built part of that bar. Uh, and then we went to a trailer park that he had bought and we all worked there. And then we went into the trailer that he lived. And do you remember the bird? Oh, yeah. Big man, Henry. So he had the bird. You pushed the button. And then yeah. whatever you said, it repeated it. But it repeated it like, like a repeat, repeat. Yeah. And it said it like in a, in a, in a bird accent. accent. But, but so years later, uh, I'm going to guess 2012-ish, I Googled his name and I found this uh, – lady who had posted about him online and uh she'd either been an ex-wife or a girlfriend her name was denise and she and i wrote letters back and forth like emails not letters but uh, he was one of the coolest guy ever knew like he was such a great first sergeant uh, well well and so people that don't realize where i'm getting is he had passed away he got shot by a stepson of his and um but but he was really 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 you know, the thing about being in the military sometimes is, is like people don't treat you like you're not in the military. It's like you're in the military 24 seven. Right. But, but it's like, he was a, a, a person that would treat you as if you were not in the military when you weren't an active, you know, like if you, if it was a weekend and you're in civilian clothes, he treated you like you were Frankie. Right. And, uh, you know, another one that I remember like that was like, uh, Doug Jones, who was a mortar in our, in our unit. Uh, he was like one of the first people that invited me to like a function outside of like the barracks to go and hang out. And, uh, you know, he treated me he called me Frankie and you, you have to know then, uh, you know, how to respect people when you come back, which is kind of crazy, right? It's crazy yeah. because like in your civilian world, if you go out with your supervisor, you don't come back to work and you, uh, you know, say, Hey, look, motherfucker, you need to give me a, a promotion, right? Like you treat yeah. them with, with respect. And I mean, it's, it's a given that that's what you're going to do just because you hang out and you have a couple of beers with them. Doesn't mean you're going to start shitting all over them. But it was just crazy that the military, you know, you take that like little bit of building up the, the trust. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Van, First Sergeant Van Hendricks, awesome guy. Uh, you, you remember going to uh, the, um, uh, what was the bar that we went to? The warehouse. You remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember the warehouse. Uh, like I, I, lot, I played a lot of pool there. Yeah. Uh, so the warehouse was like they had live music, uh, and uh, we would go there occasionally. And it was a little bit of a haul now that I, now that I realize it. But there was really nothing like that was around the 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 base or post. We, I know it, it was a ways down there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the only thing the outside that was, us were like you know like really really divey strip bars and you know like you know. Uh, Pawn shops, <laughs> you know, so uh, pawn shops. Uh, oh my gosh, you remember? Uh, uh, you remember Mona's Log Cabin? Do you remember that place? Oh, yeah, I was gonna bring that up. <laughs> oh, please do, please do. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, that's uh, it's it was the kind of place that you know, uh, you know, it's like, I guess it was like, you know, the second rate strippers went, you know, the kind with like, you know, stretch Martin bullet wounds and like missing limbs, missing teeth. <laughs> no, <laughs> but no, it, was, it, 
it was Buckley's favorite place to go because I because like somebody we knew was the, also the uh, the DJ there. Uh, yeah, I think his That's name. The bar sergeant, I think it was. Y- yes, yes, yes. You're right. Uh, I I want to say it wasn't Baker, but. But, but yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. He had a creepy mustache and he was the yeah. DJ there. And, and you remember the guy named Snyder would hang out there. I like Snyder. He was cool. Uh, a- until what happened? Uh, oh, that's that stinky bastard. Right, right. No, so- it wasn't Snyder I was thinking about. It was somebody else. Snyder. Snyder was a stud. He was a uh, M60 machine gunner in the first platoon. And then I got moved, I, I don't know, headquarters or somewhere. But he, he was a stud. He was a machine gunner and would, was just kicking ass. He and, was a stud. And, and then yeah. he was getting drafted for some reason. Well, because he was hanging out with that sergeant. I don't remember his name. I, I, I'll have to think of it. But he hung, was hanging out with that supply sergeant at Mona's Lock Cabin, and then he tested positive for Coke or something. Something like that. But I know that as soon as he got chaptered, he vowed not to, like, bathe until he left the army. Yes, which is a crazy vow, right? Like, this guy had the kind of smell that where – he would be in a room and he'd leave. And after a half hour, you'd walk in and be like, Snyder was here. Yeah. It was like pig pan in real life. Oh God. That was a smelly bastard. I was so glad when he left. Well, I, I've looked him up a couple times. I've, I've not been able to find him because I was curious of what, what happened to him. Uh, well, I'm once sure he got he, like, went to normal after he got out, but you know, I don't know. Are you normal if you like vow not to take ba- baths until? Uh, no, no. You know, yes, he, he he had some issues. Uh, so, do you remember you and I went to this Mona's log cabin place once? Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, I think it was me, you, and Buckley, and maybe somebody else. And uh, and like I didn't even want to go. It was like I think Buckley dragged us there. White Buckley. And uh, and then like we were talking to this like you know like bullet hole stripper, and uh, and then she, she's and, like a redhead with like a mullet. Yeah, and then you said something, and then, uh, and I, then I I said, well, she she said about you. She said, "What's wrong with him?" I said, "Oh, don't don't mind him," because you were like wanting her to get away from you, you yeah. know. And, and I said, "Don't mind him." He, he just got the loony bin and she said, yeah, <laughs> I'm cra- I, I've been in the prison and the loony bin. Yeah. <laughs> and you go, you throw your hands up and you go, all right, you've won. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and then we went over to say bye to that Sergeant. I don't remember his name. And, and, and he goes, Hey, you see that girl that was talking to you guys over there? She's going home with me tonight. <laughs> Like, and you're, uh, yeah, good for you. You're bragging about that? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he said like he thought we were trying to take her, and it's like, are you kidding me? I know she was missing teeth. <laughs> oh. and, I think, and I think she had like a knife scar on her side. This, oh, oh yeah, this, yeah. She, she, she was not, she was not attractive. This girl uh, had a rough life. I know that. Bless her heart. I, I, I'm sure she might have been in her twenties, but she looked like you know she was like in her forties. Oh, she had yeah, 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 yeah. She she was rough, but and, and Mona's was owned by an Asian lady, and I think in the front they had a restaurant part uh, that that I that I remember. And let's talk about our buddy McDaniel. Oh, yeah, he's a cool guy. He's from Texas, though. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you remember the joke about where he was from? Oh, yeah, he was like, he said he was from Bowie, but, you know, he's actually from some some wide spot in the road called Sunset, you know? Yes, yes. there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh... I mean, your town has to be shit if you're bragging <laughs> so... you're from Bowie, which is like nothing either. So I'm going to tell this story. You can chime in anytime you want. Uh, so I started dating that one girl, baby doll. 
Oh, yeah. What was and her she, name? Huh? You don't remember what her name, real name was? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say it, though. Uh, okay. but, but I don't remember. But, uh, uh, so, so baby dolls, what we called her. And so she went well. well and, and so she, she came, I met her through a friend, and uh, she brought this girl down with her named Jill. And uh, Jill was supposed to hook up with uh, Buckley, Buckley, right? Uh, the guy from Arkansas who uh, had uh, his wife had left him once he got in the military and. He was uh, a little, um, what's the word? Uh, he, he was disgruntled about the whole thing. And so uh, we all are going out and we're going to the warehouse. And um, Jill goes there with Buckley. And somehow at this place, she leaves Buckley and ends up with his roommate, Jody uh last name mcdaniel and and goes back to the barracks with jody and and uh fornicates with jody and (laughs) 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 and so us being the instrument that we were after it was all over with we gave buckley such a hard time you know of Teased them that here he had this girl that came to hook up with him and then ended up that his shy, nerdy, you know, I don't remember what game system Jody had, but he had some game system, right? I think it was like a Sega. Yeah. He had, so 94, probably, a, I don't know, Dreamcast or Genesis or something. I think it was a Sega Genesis. Yeah. So he's a nerd playing these games. And and here's Buckley, this guy who could play electric guitar and had this great physique, and his nerdy, shy roommate stole the girl that was for him. And, and, and Buckley's the guy who, after he got in the military, his wife left him and was with his best friend. I mean, it was just this one of these stories that you'd see in a movie or something, and then you you kept making the joke you're like can you imagine buckley over there laying in the bed covering his yeah. ears like oh, they're, oh there's not they're not doing anything they're not yeah. doing anything <laughs> yes because that's the way you would be you would be like oh denying anything happened and, and then, then from then on we called the we called the mcdaniel the cock block kid yes exactly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, (laughs) (laughs) they're not doing nothing, they're not doing nothing. (laughs) So, uh, let's talk about your kids. You had two awesome kids, I had three. Uh, well, you had you had two in the beginning. Yeah. And then you and then you got remarried and you had another one and so you're the uh, the parent of uh, how old is Caden? Ten. Ten. So you've got what's the age range? Um, Sheridan just turned twenty two. Ethan is twenty. He'll be uh, twenty one in June. And Caden ten. All right. So I saw a picture that you posted like the last day or two of uh, Sheridan. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you, you have her name there uh, on your arm. Yeah. And you had, you had Sheridan when you were in, uh, what, Hawaii? Hawaii, yeah. Both of but Ethan and Sharon were both born in the same hospital by the same doctor. What was the hospital? Uh, Tripler. It's well, the, big, the big pink hospital. Yeah, well, also known as Crippler. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, so so Jan and I just surprised our kids with uh, a trip to Hawaii this summer. That's so, cool. Yeah, so we're, we're going to take. Because when you fly into the the Honolulu airport, when you look when you're looking out the right side of the plane, that's one of the, the most dominant features is that big pink hospital on the hill. Well, you know, I was in there for a month. Did you know that? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, that was for the sex change operation. Uh, they didn't do a very good job. <laughs> didn't you have some kind of abscess or something? <laughs> oh, asthma. Close your uh, 
It's my it's my asthma. Uh, but but we're but we're going back there uh, th- this summer, and so you you had uh, Sheridan and then Ethan, and so that was after you'd gotten out and you went back in, right? Yeah. So <laughs> let's go back to when you had gotten out. Uh, when you got out, it had to be 96, 97. No, it, was like, it was like 95 because I came back in 96. Uh, no, no, no. Because I came back from Korea in 96, February 96, and you were living in Raleigh. Yeah. And um, I don't remember, the, maybe Six Forks. So I went to your apartment. Do you remember what had happened in your apartment? Shotgun. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, we don't speak about that. Because, okay, so uh, I, don't my, I don't want my reputation ruined. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, I went to your apartment, and then you and I had uh, taken a journey together. Do you remember the journey that we took together after I got back? Did we go to? Um, uh... Well, that was when I first got in the wrestling business. Oh yeah, yeah. We went to uh, Mount Airy. Yeah, and and we did uh, a couple of wrestling shows. And what was your wrestling name? Uh, uh yeah, it's probably something stupid. No, it, uh, no, it was good. It was, it was related to actually your family, Mister Love. Oh okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> And the yeah, other guy, the, the Hollywood kids bodyguards. Yes, which was kind of funny because you're a foot taller than me. Who was who was that, who that was guy? Who? I won't say his real name because he tried to add me on Facebook and I denied it. But okay. we called him Mr. Wright. And, uh, then, and so uh, Dennis, and then the other guy's name that was Dennis, and the other guy's name was Chris, that came and hung out with us that weekend. One of the weekends. So you and I made a couple things. And remember, everybody wanted you to like be a part of it. Uh, because you were so much bigger, right? You remember Mr. Big Stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I woke up th- the other night. Hello, my sweet love. Hey, could you say hello to my friend Evan? You never met him. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm very well. You must be Jenna. I am, yes. Uh, pleased yeah. to meet you. You too. He was my roommate like in 93 in the Army. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's been a little while. <laughs> well, it's very nice to meet you. I just got back from a play, so took our oh, hope kid. it was enjoyable. And he lives, in, nice. he lives in Fayetteville. Okay. Which we're we're moving back to Wilmington as soon as we can. Yeah, probably like five years. Okay. Yeah. But in the meantime, you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't take a trip to Florida. You know, right? it's too damn hot down there. It's 50 uh, right now. It's freezing. <laughs> I know. I remember I went there in November for a cruise in Miami and I was sweating, you know. Yeah. It was terrible. It actually, prior to this week, it's been in the 70s and 80s, so it is hot. We just have a cold week. Well, you know what's probably interesting for him is uh, he sees me with my actual wife. Mm-hmm. The whole time that we knew each other in the military, he called me gay. Oh, so he thought that I'm. Um... <laughs> 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 On that note. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, what was I talking about before my hot wife came in? Uh, he was talking about the the wrestling match up in Mount Airy. Oh, where, so, so so we oh, all went. You got, you got triple booed by your own niece. That's true. That's the the, the, the or that's the double true. booed. Yeah, the old double the the old double boo. Um, and and then uh, we had stopped in Raleigh, picked you up. And, and we had uh, ridden in the Mitsubishi clips. And uh, that was like my first start of being in, in the, to wrestling, which was a lot of fun. But, it, but everybody wanted you to be a part of it. Oh, what I was going to say was 
uh, Mr. Big Stuff. You remember that guy? Well, mm -hmm. I, ironically, he's still alive. I oh, found really? him. Uh, I found him online, um, probably a month or two ago. And, and uh, I don't remember his, his his real name, but last name is Woody, and he was running for some office, and I saw videos of him. But I just remember that you were like mesmerized with him. It, you oh, were at, do. you I were do. asking him all these questions. You're like, oh wow, um, how much do you weigh? Um, he is a very large individual. And, and then you're like, you got a girlfriend? And you're asking him all these questions. And I don't remember who, like, the the stars were of uh, that, that evening. Uh, Ricky Morton was one of them, I think. You remember yeah, Ricky, Ricky Morton and the Rock and Roll Express? So Jen and I went to one of the fan fests, and we went to meet Ricky Morton. And I was excited to meet him because I wanted to talk to him because – uh, not only did I work one of those shows with him when I first got started, but I worked like several afterwards. And I, I wanted to say, hey, you remember me? You remember my cousin that we worked with? Uh, Ricky and I worked a, a match against each other. And then we also did some tags with each other. And, and I was hoping that he would just, I don't know, talk to me a little bit and explain a couple of questions that I had about why he did things. So, Right before Jan and I walked up to Ricky's table with his partner, Robert, uh, and they were the headliners of the CWF Legends fan fest. Uh, this guy was in front of us, and he bought $100 worth of stuff from Ricky. And then I woke up, and I'm like, uh, hey, can I get a picture with you guys? And uh, Ricky, I, I don't know if you recognize me, but you know, you and I worked some shows together and he says, Oh, who, who the shows we work for? And I told him my cousin, Bobby. And he's like, Oh, Bobby's dead. Ain't he? I was like, well, yeah. I mean, that's not how you kind of want the conversation to go. And we took the pictures and then wrapped up and, and that, that was it. But I was like, damn, I mean, that's, I, I really wanted to, but he thought that everybody walking up that table was going to spend a hundred bucks. Right. But that's just not uh -huh. how it is. Cause they're, they're paid ahead of time for their time. So, uh, but I, I don't, I don't hold it against that. I, I, I get it. Like, you know, you, you, uh, uh, you're in it to sell the, the, the merchandise usually. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's wrap up here. We've got six minutes left and I thank you so much for your time. So good talking to you and seeing you again. So you got Sheridan's name on one arm. Please tell me you have Ethan somewhere else. There you go. There's Sheridan. And I got a, I got a place right there for Caden. I just like, I just ain't got around to it yet. <laughs> you, you don't want to go for the back, for the chest. I figured I'd keep her on an arm. Uh, there you go. Do, do you think yeah. you'll have any more kids? No. Okay. Uh, l l let me ask you this. Where? Hi to Frankie, one of my good Hello. Gosh, you've gotten taller. Look, you've gotten taller. Do you remember <laughs> me? Do you remember meeting me? No. no. Okay. I, I, I met you in uh, North Carolina at the beach. Yeah, we went to... Uh, how old was I? Uh, you were probably like about four. Five. Yeah. Four. yeah it was like 2007. No, no. 2017, 2018. Yeah, you would have been, yeah, you'd have been like five, four or five. Yeah. But can I show you a dance I made? Hey, just a minute. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I just got a few more minutes to talk to him and then. Uh, we have four more minutes. Okay. But but go ahead and dance in the background. Please distract your father as much as you can. So so Evan, uh, you post this picture of Sheridan, your oldest yep. kid, right? Yep. Uh, and uh, the other day, and I showed Jenna. I said, "Oh look, this is Evan's kid." Uh, can you please tell everyone the story of Sheridan in the park in Raleigh? <laughs> yeah, I uh, took her to I think it's Poland Park. Yeah, Poland Park. Uh, it's a park with, uh, you know, like they got, it's a train theme and then they've got like a, 
like a, a miniature type passenger train that goes around the whole park. And, and it so, was right down the street from where I lived. And yeah. and you came with your mom. Yeah. And, uh, and my, and and my it was kid. living, I think in Durham at the time, right? Durham, Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, Sharon, took- have, it was Ethan and Sheridan there, but yeah. Sheridan have, having such a great time. Ethan was a little younger. So, you know, and, and he was very so, reserved back then, like very quiet. And, and, and there was time to go because she was saying how much she loved it. And then it was time to go. She was like, I don't want to go. And I was like, yeah, it was like, yes, yeah, like, did you have a fun? Did you have did you have fun? Did you have a fun riding the trains? She was like, no, and stomped her feet. And I said, and I hate choo choo trains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was the most hilarious thing. And so every time I see this girl, as she's grown <laughs> up from whatever three or four years old, all the way until she's like twenty three now. Twenty two. Yeah, and, and then I, I saw her in 2017, 2018, and, and, and I said, Sherry, you, you're not going to remember this, but I'm going to tell you my memory of you. And, and then uh, I saw her another time after that, and I said I, the same thing. Like, And it's like I could tell she's like, look, can you please stop telling me about the time I acted out as a kid that I don't even remember, <laughs> you know? You know how kids are, right? And I was like, people look at it from different perspectives because to you, that was the cutest, funniest thing, you know. Yes. You know, you know. you're you're like, did you have fun? And she's like, no, I didn't have fun, and I don't like choo choo trains. And it's just the <laughs> way that she said the choo choo trains. <laughs> she All emphasized right. that foot stamp. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, m- m- much like you back in the day where you didn't like chicken head hoes. I still don't. <laughs> oh, that no, Evan. Thank you so much for coming and talking to me. Hey, good to see you. We're really have it, to make plans to come down and see you. Oh, absolutely, man. You should. You should. We've got the Disney World. We've got the Epcot. We've got the Universal. We've got the beach. We've got the golf. So, anyway, good talking to you, man. I love you and I miss you. I hope I see you soon. And go have fun with Caden. It was great talking to you, and I'll see you later. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, Errol. It's about time for the old go home. Next week, we are going to uh, talk about some dining in Wilmington, North Carolina, where Jenna and I was this past um, um, weekend and uh, some of the crap we got. All right. And we will also have on a, another uh, session of Matt Crowder's Nerd Talk. This will be number three. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll be interested in watching your journey of, you know, skinny Ariel. Ugh. Well, healthy Ariel. <laughs> Healthier Ariel. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't uh, like being too and you know, let me give a little update. My bud, my buddy, he lost weight and uh, he's doing a much better um, uh, than 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 before. Um, I, I didn't ask him if his if his penis has started working not, or not, and he he is in a relationship with a, a very fine woman uh, who is uh, kind of out of his league. So I'm happy for him on that note. Um, so I- anyway, um, uh, y- you know, I, I am just, uh, trying to say something positive, encouraging to you that, you know, you can get through this is basically <laughs> what I'm getting at. If, if this guy can do it, you, you, you can do it. And definitely, you know, they, they say you can't reverse the whatever, uh, of, of diabetes. And, and, and I disagree. I, I think, I think the problem with nerve damage is it does take nerves a long time to heal, but, but they can be healed you know obviously if it's something that's separated is not going to grow back but you know nerves can heal i i I got kicked in my face in probably 1999 and for about six months uh my face was numb from the corner of my eye down to the corner of my outside of my 
lips uh, around my top lip and then around my nose and then up to the other corner of my eye. That uh-huh. whole section I couldn't even I couldn't move and I couldn't feel anything, and it was like extremely painful. So it was some type of nerve damage. But it took six months for that to, to heal, and I, finally the pain went away, and then I could move that side of my face again. So I, I nerves can heal, but you know usually by the time that people catch nerve damage, uh, especially with diabetes, it's hard for them to to reverse it, and because they can't quit the the lifestyles to you know the uh the insulin has already uh or the pancreas has already made so much uh insulin that it can't keep up with the insulin to uh, the the glucose that you have so they end up having high blood sugar all the time so it's hard for those um uh nerves to repair right but but you know in your case I, i think there's hope and if you can't reverse it at least you can stop it yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to try my best. Uh, I've done it before to an extent, and I'm confident that I can do it again. And it just takes uh, time and it takes a lot of effort. And, you know, that's uh, that's actually the uh, the not so hard parts of it. Processing it, you know, emotionally and, and, and all that, kind of difficult at, for now. But uh, once I start getting the ball rolling um yeah that's the only one that can stop me is me so yeah thanks frankie though thank you everybody oh, <laughs> my my pleasure we're here with you buddy <laughs> thank you all right well great i'll talk to you uh next time mm-hmm. uh for some nerd talk with Ben Crowder. all right cool thanks everybody love you guys love you bye, bye.